last time on Dice Heist. The group heads home after going over what Inaza was able to dig up, discussing the possible implications on the way. As the group nears their apartment, Dirk begins to get paranoid, especially with the current threat posed to them by Yandan. As they enter the apartment, immediately, Dirk notices the rancid smell of rotten meat and begins hoping it is only an old ham sandwich. Once they move in further, Adam, not worried about the smell, plops down on the couch face down. Dirk follows the smell with Bertram at his heels, both with swords out and Bertram's alight with magical energy. As they reach Adam's room, the smell intensifies and they begin to relax, feeling more confident that it is a ham sandwich. As the door is swung open, the truth is revealed as a black tentacle of goo comes flying out and tries to hit Dirk. As they move in on the creature, they find it is a black pudding sitting on Dirk's bed. This large amorphous blob of black sludge that smells of rotten meat. Quickly, Adam charges up to help his companions defeat the creature, while Dirk finds out his non-magical weapon not only is less effective, it is also being eaten away by the acid of the creature's body. The creature deals a critical blow to Adam's arm, causing him to nearly double over in pain before the creature is finally dispatched and begins to lose cohesion as it seeps into Dirk's bed and the floor below. Dirk, after examining the room, finds that the window is broken in and finds a note pinned to the exterior of the window that is addressed to him from Gandon. The group, after taking out this creature, decides it's safe to head to bed, Dirk obviously sleeping on the couch. The next morning, the group heads into work early, and Bertram receives a page from Inaza, informing them that she has scheduled a meeting with Adenal for them that morning. After a quick stop at the precinct to catch Mudbreaker up and to grab a few supplies, they head out to Alchemco's office in Eastgate. Upon arrival, they notice that Adenal seems distracted, but mostly calm. After a few moments of conversation, a scientist in a lab coat knocks at the door before being beckoned in by Adenal. After a brief discussion, the newcomer crunches down on something and begins to rage out like the kobolds, but bigger and with less obvious pain. Right after calmly saying, Fenian sends his regards. Welcome back to Dice Heist, where we roll the dice and see what we can get away with. My name is Nick. I'm playing Dirk Vilgoth, our arcane trickster. And we're going to see uh, what kind of trouble we're getting into today in this combat. Uh, over to you, Bronson. Hey, everybody. Nice to see you again. Or hear from you. Or not, because I can't hear you guys, but you can hear me. I'll be playing Adam Vadova, our rogue wizard. Yeah, yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of trouble today, <laughs> like Nick said. Uh, Aaron, what about you? My name is Aaron. I will be playing our uh, resident bard, Bertram Dirgestride. Um, and we definitely should just shoot on sight more often. Over to you, <laughs> DM. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, I'm Raceland, the DM for Dice Heist. And today we're going to teach them a lesson about over or underestimating people, especially women, who are of smaller stature. So, uh, last time, a small woman, human, walked into the room as they were having a discussion with Adenal and crunched down on a rage capsule before the guys could do anything about it. So, we're going to start with a flat initiative to see who will act first in this fight. Oh, boy. Boy is right. I think we did estimate her, but then she was definitely not very threatening until she was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all, right, all right. I mean, like, I, I believe if I, if I remember, like, both of them seemed like not maybe not nervous. One of them seemed nervous. I think Adderall seemed like super nervous. She she did seem at least like distracted and a little bit nervous. Yeah. So for mm -hmm. initiative, Dirk got seventeen. So that's pretty good. 
That is pretty good. Ten. I got nine. Okay. So let's hope that this uh, creature doesn't do better than you. All right. So let's. Ruh-roh. So uh, on initiative count 19. Oh, no. Uh, you guys are currently standing in a very, not very small, but a small laboratory slash office specifically just for Adenal. And before this, you were all sitting down at her desk yeah, in the back wanted. corner, and uh, for sure Adenal was talking to you. Yeah. Uh, and this woman walked in, turned into the giant rage monster, and still is currently standing by the door. There's maybe about 30 feet of distance between you, and the room is maybe 40 by 40 at the largest. Uh, there are a few tables with some lab equipment and benches all along the walls, also with lab equipment, test results, all that sort of thing. So, you guys have plenty of places if you want to, you know, maneuver yourself around. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to just tell me that you're doing that in some way, and I might make you make a skill check in addition to kind of incorporate that into the into the combat. All right? So, first up, this creature, we're going to call it the Rage Hemoth. Oh, man. <laughs> That's a great name. Yep. I love it. I mean, originally, I was going to base it off the Frog Hemoth, so that's where I went with it, but I I changed it up a bit, so it's okay. Um, So it's not going to eat you or anything, hopefully. All right, so uh, this creature begins charging towards you guys, and who is closest to the door? I'm going to let you guys decide that. Uh, Well, as soon as Dirk heard the crunch, uh, he immediately jumped out of his seat and started charging towards the door. So probably he'd be most the way there by the time it finishes transforming. Uh, You actually did not react as quickly as you thought uh, based on your initiative roll. So it is going to be moving before you are there yet. But you can be kind of standing up, not, you know, sitting down. Sure. All right. So so Dirk is closest to it, I'm guessing. Yeah, I have the highest initiative out of us too, so that makes sense. Okay. That makes sense. So it's just going to charge directly at you, and it's going to bring one of its massive hands down, and it's going to try and grab you. What does this thing look like now? Because it, it's it's human, right? It's not like the kobold ones that we've seen. Correct. Um, so it seems to have much more pinkish skin, similar to a human, and on top of that, you do see some like scales that look almost reptilian and have, like, a greenish hue to them. Hmm. So, uh, it's going to make a swing at you, Dirk, and that's going to hit you. Oof. I'm not going to bother uh, telling you that. Okay, so please make a strength saving throw as it tries to grab you. Uh, oh, yeah, I don't have any pluses for strength. All right, it's treat roll. Oof. Oof. That's an eight. That's an eight? Yeah. Okay, so you're only going to take six points of damage. Okay. But this thing is going to grab you. And it is currently holding you. You are considered grappled. Okay. Uh, with its second attack, wait, it's going to... What's that? Were, like, was was this thing doing like the grapple like action? or is No, this is one of its attacks. Gotcha. Okay, okay. It makes a melee attack against you. And if you fail your strength saving throw, it grabs you. Shit. All right. Uh, so then, it's going to take its second attack and throw you at Bertram. <laughs> yep. So, <laughs> Dirk, make a dexterity saving throw, please. All right, I'm a lot better. This at one, this. you got a better chance. All right. Yep. Uh, and 27 <laughs> is going to hit you as well, Bertram. All right, I uh, got a natural 20 for 27. 27, okay. So, in that case, you know what I'm going to do? Because originally, your success would in- decrease the damage by half to both of you. I'm going to say that you completely miss Bertram by spinning out of the way. You are prone right now, but neither of you take any damage from this throw because of your natural 20. Okay. Nice. Woo! Yes. All right. Uh, and that is it for the Rage Hemoth's turn. Next, we move on to Dirk. Okay. So after being picked up and thrown across the room, (laughs) uh, Dirk's just going to get up real quick and 
he's going to uh, weave uh, some magic in his hands as he as he throws this at him, and he's going to say to the creature, "Did you hear the? Did you hear about the halfling psychic that broke out of prison? He's a small medium at large." And cast Tasha's hideous laughter at him. <laughs> okay, all right. So what kind of save do I need to make for that uh, one? Wisdom. Uh, it's a okay. DC 15. 15, okay. So <laughs> similar to your roll, this is a flat roll. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, that's a six. So uh, it starts busting out laughing. And the cacophonous laughter huh, 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 is, is just like booming through the room. As it, it's just laughing maniacally and smacking its its uh, stomach enthusiastically with this awful, awful, awful. Uh, what are the other effects of Tasha's hideous laughter? Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, become Becoming incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. Uh, duration is concentration up to one minute. Um, a creature with intelligence score of four or less isn't affected. Uh, at the end of each of its turns, and each time it takes damage, the target can make another wisdom saving throw. The target has advantage on saving throws uh, if it's triggered by damage, and on a success, the spell ends. Okay. Uh, Alrighty. So that was half of Dirk's movement and his action. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's going to use the other half of his movement to kind of move towards it and uh, bonus act I don't think I can really do anything useful with my bonus action Uh, I don't think I claimed that I had my mage hand up so I'm not so bad so yeah uh, Dark's just gonna can you summon Zed with a bonus um I don't know if I can bring him in with a bonus action. I think it's an action. Okay, okay. Um, All right. So, yeah, he's just going to bring out his rapier, and I guess he already used uh, that really bad <laughs> joke for his talking, so he can't really say anything <laughs> <Yep>. else. <laughs> so that's All right, turn. so that's, uh, that's it for your turn. Um, so next up we have Bertram. Uh, remind me again, what happened to the person we're here to meet when the whole cult out? So she was currently sitting behind the desk that you guys are mm-hmm. sitting at, and you guys were closer to the creature than she was. Um, okay. From there, your focus completely turned from her onto this creature just because they're on opposite ends. Um, yeah, I want to look for her. So you look back. Uh, And you can see she's huddled underneath the desk right now. Like, that was her first reaction when she saw this, was just dive underneath the desk. Okay. my, I I thought um, last time that she's the one that answered the door. I thought she was, like, right at the door in front of this thing. No. So she had unlocked the door for you, and I made a note of it to make sure that she didn't lock it after you. Okay. So instead of getting up to open the door, she says, come in. Okay. And the door opens... And in comes the creature. So okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to. I guess I'll uh, put myself between the towering scientist and uh, the Hulk monster, um, and I'm going to draw my rapier mm-hmm. and try to shoot it. Sorry, not my rapier, my pistol. pistol. Mm-hmm. I'm try to shoot it. Okay. Yeah, uh, go ahead and make that attack with advantage. Because it is incapacitated. We're not going to oh, incapacitate, right. but you know. Is it incapacitated? It is incapacitated. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's true. If it's. Okay. I would like to hold my action until uh, it starts heading this way or gets back up from being incapacitated. Okay. And uh, instead, I'll uh, I'll just say to everyone else, should we leave? I feel I feel like we should leave. <laughs> That's my turn. Okay. But I'm going to shoot the shit out of it if it, if it moves. Stops laughing. Okay. Sounds good. 
I was gonna say, add a boy. Don't don't kill my spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So next up is Adam. Seeing that we're in a laboratory and this thing's on the ground, laughing for I don't know. Does Adam does Adam know what this spell does? Like, does he know the full details? Uh, of it? Roll an intelligence check. Yeah, just roll an intelligence check. See if you've ever come across it. Would you allow an arcana? Uh, sure. I was, I was gonna say a lot of, like, in, in the backstory wise, a lot of Dirk's magical studying was done with Adam, so they would probably have a familiarity with each other's abilities. Okay, yeah, still roll it, just I'll, I'll, I'll change the DC based on it, but so we've got a natural 16. I'm adding 6 to that. Yeah, so you definitely know how long Tasha's hideous laughter lasts for. And how long does Tasha's hideous laughter uh, last up for? To a minute. Roughly a minute. Yeah. Okay. I so, think they get a yeah, save. They get a save. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do. At the end of every turn. At the, yeah, yeah. Um, so knowing that we're operating on limited time and that we're in a laboratory... Uh, Adam's going to actually poke his head down underneath the desk because he's like kind of still sitting there Mm -hmm. and look at uh, Adonol. I always want to say Adderall, (laughs) but looking at Adonol and say, uh, you wouldn't happen to have any chloroform around here, would you? Okay, so. (laughs) And then while, while waiting for an answer, Adam would like stick his head back up and just like glance around to see if he can perhaps identify chloroform or something he knows might put this thing to sleep. Okay, so uh, I'm going to have you make a hmm. <laughs> Hang on, let me roll first to see. Okay, so she she uh, stammers to yeah, yeah yes it, 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 and she points over in a direction towards a cabinet um, that's behind this creature rolling around on the floor <laughs> laughing. Uh, and I'm going to run over, leap over the creature, like, like, well clearing it so <laughs> there's no chance of, well, at least no perceivable chance of tripping over it. But uh, Roll an athletics check. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's fine. I would have had an 11. Uh, I, don't I don't know if that's like uncoordinated enough or coordinated enough. No, no, but. you're fine. You're fine. I was, I was just, I just <laughs> wanted the nat one. The nat one would have been bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. All right. So you're able to leap over and get to this cabinet that she pointed out to you. Yes. Uh, inside, there are a plethora of different bottles, different containers with various labels on them. So I'm going to have you make an investigation check to find what you're looking for. I like those. And depending on how well you roll, will determine whether or not you find it this round, next round, or the round after. All right, all right. Hey, that's not bad. That's actually really good. So I got a, a natural 16, and I'm adding 9 to it uh, for a total of 25. Okay, so you open up the cabinet, and the first bottle you look at <laughs> uh, is the chloroform on it. Uh, so this is going to conclude your turn, though, uh, that's fair. from there. That's fair. Um, but you, you do see it right there. Okay. Uh, so from there, uh, it's her turn. And she's going to look kind of up and see that this creature's kind of like rolling on the ground. Laughing its ass off. And we're going <laughs> to... Yeah. And she's she's going to duck back underneath the desk. Just completely frozen with fear. She makes a glance towards the door, but you guys can assume that she made that internal decision to just know it's not safe for whatever reason uh so next up it is the rage hemoth turn and he continues to roll around on the floor uh giggling giddily now and is going to make another flat dc 15 wisdom save uh that's a natural two so uh he continues chuckling next up is dirk yes all right so dirk is going to uh move around to the opposite side of it uh blocking its path to the door um and he is going to ready a booming blade stab or if it breaks out of the laughing fit um and i believe via the spell it is also 
so I believe out. I I think both spells you're trying to cast here are concentration. Uh, is, bo- is booming oh, blade is not concentration. Oh wait, no, I, I can't. I can't. I can't hold another spell and hold concentration on a spell at the same time. So correct. I just yep. Hold yep. a regular attack. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yep. That'll just be a regular attack. Uh, can't bring that back. Okay. Bonus action. So that'll be it for me. Okay, so next up it is Bertram. Uh, your action is now fully wasted from last turn, and you are up. Um, I'm going to uh, reach out a hand to Adeline, and we're going to try to get her out of here. Okay. Uh, yeah, just make a persuasion check for me. Really? This is not the time. Okay. Uh, 17. Okay. Yeah, so she, she hesitantly reaches her hand up and grabs yours, and you each run towards the door and are currently at the door. Okay. Am I close enough to see into the hallway? Uh, you can see into the hallway, but not really down either direction. It's just directly okay. across at another door. So. Fair okay. Um, if I have an action remaining, I'm just going to hold it. Uh, hold it pistol shot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing as before. Definitely just because it looks super cool. Yep. Yeah. You definitely are pointing a pistol at it waiting for it to move. Uh, Next up would be Adam. Adam's going to grab this uh, bottle, flask, beaker, whatever you want to call it of chloroform. Uh, Turn around looking at this creature. What are we calling these, by the way? Do Do we have like a word for what these are, or are we just calling them, like, monsters for now, because we're kind of ambiguous on... Oh, the, the characters didn't really give them a name yet. You can call them 54s. <laughs> 54s. <laughs> well, the substance code was uh, yeah. 0861054. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, I'm done for that, 54s. Uh, he's going to look over at it and then, like, look at Bertram... And then he's gonna look back at it, and he's just he's just gonna like uncork or uncap this beaker, and basically splash this stuff uh, on the face and head of this fifty-four. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, when you do this, are you doing this from a slight distance? Are you getting right up in his face and doing it? Basically, like walking up right next to him, uh, and just kind of dumping it on him. Yeah, dump it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So when you do that. I'm actually going to need you to make a constitution saving throw. Whoa. As the fumes are going to begin dissipating into the air. Uh, and you might get a small effect of it as it splashes back up what? at you. As much as I don't want to screw myself and say this, I'm also adjacent to this thing. So I imagine you're going to have me make that same save. No, no, because you're not the one. It's not, like, okay. directly below you. Oh, okay. That's why okay. I, I said that, because he's, like, standing over it, pouring it over him, and the fumes are going to go directly up into Adam's face. Okay, sure. That was my logic behind it, at least. Okay. So. Con save is 14. 14, okay. All right, so, Adam, uh, you get a little woozy, um, and, and you feel kind of sick in the stomach, uh, and maybe a little lightheaded and kind of back up a few steps. But other than that, you're pretty much okay. It just, it, it was kind of like a, a rush for a second there where it felt like you were going to pass out from it. It pours into its nasal cavities and down its throat and you just see fumes kind of like pouring out of its face now. And it's just like, it starts hacking and just stops. All, all while it was laughing. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, 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 and it just stops moving dead in its tracks. Uh, as it rolled with a plus six, Ten. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> All right. So this thing is passed out on the ground for an indeterminate amount of time. You you do see it's still twitching a little bit, and it, it looks like it's still trying to laugh in its sleep. But you, you're not really sure what that is. It just looks kind of gruesome, as like this creature is just kind of like twitching on the ground right now. How how long do these transformations? Uh take to kill their host because isn't that what eventually ends up happening to them correct uh so you while you were in the lab learned from the uh head examiner that this drug seems to 
inevitably kill the person who takes it within a few hours of them taking it. Okay. However, when you look at this creature, it, it doesn't look like the eyes didn't look as bloodshot as the uh, the kobolds were. And when you were examining the kobolds, you even noticed like ripping of their skin as it was stretching too quickly. You notice that that's not the case with this creature. It seems just a little bit different just from examining it just quickly. Hmm. Okay. Now, uh, remind me, do we, as law enforcement, uh, typically carry, uh, what is it, like, uh, like shackles or handcuffs or whatever. Uh, yeah, you guys can carry shackles slash handcuffs, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Uh, would the ones that we have be too small for this hulking thing? Um, hmm. <laughs> In a world with magical creatures. Yeah. And this. Uh, you know what? Roll a d20. Okay. 11 or higher, and you have shackles that will fit this creature. Cool. Yeah, it's a seven. Okay. So, unfortunately, they do exist, and they are at the precinct. However, you guys did not have the foresight to grab them beforehand. Okay. As you guys have never dealt with creatures this large ever before in your endeavors. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, Dirk's going to bring out his rope and start, uh, start tying up the thing and tell Adam to call for backup immediately because we need to get this thing contained okay yeah so uh you do that i was actually just going to take out my page write our mm-hmm. emergency symbol and then mm-hmm. give like some kind of address uh i don't know right. if the buildings have numbers in this city or something or if there even are addresses uh, there are there are addresses okay. um and mudbreaker actually knew exactly where you guys were because just about 20 minutes ago you let him know where you were going and the facility is very close i mean it would have been like a five minute walk for you guys dope if you had walked there so you know that help will be there very quickly from you sending this message awesome um so from there you guys hear some commotion down the hall bertram as you're standing by it and um two security guards kind of emerge at the doorway and are kind of like just looking um Adding all this entire time has just been like furiously gripping your hand, Bertram, and is not letting it go, and just is kind of like in this frozen state, huddled next to you. Uh, but these these two security guards march up, and they're like, "What the fuck is that?" It's a great question, really. Uh, do you have any larger uh, shackles by chance? Maybe a uh, uh, chain. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Dave. <laughs> Go, go, go get it. Uh, so uh, the other one runs off and this guy pulls out his gun and is just like shaking as he points it at it. The fuck is this thing? Well, um... How did it get in here? It used to be a person. Okay, let's just ease off the shaky trigger. Uh, okay, okay. Have it under control here. You're right, you're right. Uh, he puts it away. He's like, okay, all right. Uh, keep it out. Just, you know, don't start pointing at that stuff. He, he pulls out his own notebook, seemingly a page, and starts scribbling in it furiously himself. So you guys kind of have this moment where you guys can do whatever you like while you wait for about a minute before there's some other interference going on. Okay. Uh, Dirk is going to still have his rapier out and like keep an eye on this thing, but uh, he'll also bring out Zed to... Uh, kind of keep an eye on the door as well um okay and he'll just passively have uh you know zed give dirk a little ping whenever somebody new comes to the door okay yeah that sounds good i can keep that in mind okay so from there adenol kind of begins tapping your arm bertram and she I'll look at her. She's like, I, I need to tell you. I need to tell you everything now. Okay. Um, well, I guess start. That, that, that woman, her, her name is Sarah. She, she used to work underneath Dr. Fenian, the, 
the head researcher. And Bertram's taking notes. The, the truth of the matter, and you can't tell anyone this, and she kind of whispers to you, uh, y- you can't tell anyone this. Fenian is alive. He's, he's still alive. A- Alchemco faked his death. He... For what reason? Because they discovered that something in his blood allowed the serum to work. Oh, please continue. They put him in a, in a tank for the last six months. And I've been running experiments on him at the warehouse that was broken into. I see. Where is he now? Uh, as you say that, Bertram, because uh, you guys are still standing by the door, you hear several footsteps approaching the door. I I don't know. I don't know. But Sarah was... Sarah worked underneath him. She... She she thought the world of him. He He taught her everything. And as she says that last word, she taught him everything. There are four security guards that come bursting into the room. And uh, one of them immediately grabs Adenal by the arms and pulls her away from you. Um... And then behind these four guards uh, is just this white dragonborn in uh, one of the finest suits that you have ever seen that just kind of marches into the room uh, and inserts his dominance just immediately as he steps in. I don't know. Leave now. Excuse me, gentlemen. What are you doing here? Um, is it... Could I try... It? Oh, fuck, this is not my wheelhouse. <laughs> uh, could I try to... Uh, slip a, like a card or piece of paper of mine with my contact information to her. You could. I need you to make a sleight of hand check, please. Oh boy. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Ooh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. Nice. Yep. So you seemingly slip this to her without her knowing, or without anyone else but her knowing. Okay, so uh, this this white dragonborn stares you directly in the eyes as you do this and says once more, what are you doing in my facility? What we're doing, it seems, is your job, protecting your people from your people. I'm sorry, who, who the fuck are you? Oh, sorry, uh, we're the police. I'll show them our credentials. That's interesting, because this seems to be a personal matter. Based on our records here, and he pulls up uh, the sheet that has you marked down, you know, meeting uh, Adenal for personal reasons. Well, they are not mutually exclusive. Interesting. Are you the goons working on the break-in down at the docks? Uh, I think the goons have just arrived. Yeah, and as, as you say that, the, uh, the rest of the officers kind of charge in, and... Um, you know, immediately a handful of them go directly to this creature and slap it in irons, uh, and some of them make sure it's still breathing and all this. Uh, be- before they even come in, because I wanted to do stuff in that like little minute before. Yeah, of course. Sorry, uh, they got there. Uh, Adam was actually going to go through any of the belongings of this creature and see if they had anything on them. Basically, it would take. Everything minus their clothes. Okay. Go ahead and make investigation check, please. Cool. I have a total of 21. Okay. So with the 21, you can figure out two things. In her lab coat, there's a few uh, pens, uh, scraps of paper that have meaningless information on them, and there's also a key card. Looks like it has her name on it and all that. Uh, lastly, during this, you do notice something on her shoes. Now, these shoes have been all but destroyed at this point from her, you know, raging out, but on the bottom of them, you see some interesting muck. Can I take a sample? So you take a quick sample, and um, as you kind of look at it a little bit closer, you are fairly certain that this muck came from the sewers. All right. Okay. So that's what you are able to do in that time. Cool. 
Uh, Dirk, since I did not ask you, was there anything you were doing during that time? Uh, yeah, Dirk, Dirk was mostly focused on keeping the perimeter secure and making sure that, you know, uh, Adam was safe while he was uh, doing his little investigation stuff. So, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, no problem. So you are just kind of keeping watch this whole time. That's good. Yeah, okay. To jump uh, so, mm-hmm. So nothing happens eventful, um, and the the police officers finally enter. If they start trying to shackle this thing, uh, Adam is going to speak up. Okay, yeah. Say, excuse me, this is our suspect. We'll be taking him back with us. Or it's. Uh, of course, Adam. It, 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 don't you want some help? You called in the backup? Oh, I thought this was the Alchemco. Oh, no, okay, no, no, so no. This is, no, this is this is the actual police. Oh. Okay. Yeah, there was just four security guards that barged in at first and were like just checking out the situation I see. with the one white dragonborn and then the police actually showed up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, I misunderstood <laughs> right. too. I thought I thought these were the That's all right. the security guards nope. for Alchemco. This is actually the police showing up. All right, so. then Adam's not saying a fucking thing then. Yeah, they're they're cool. Okay, yeah. This creature gets shackled up and many, many more people come in and they bring chains and ropes and just begin tying it up uh, as they all just try and drag it out of the room. Make sure you have... Uh, we don't know how long they will be this large, so have smaller shackles just in case. We'll do, we'll do. Uh, and the white dragonborn begins to protest as they start dragging it out. Excuse me, this creature is property of Alchemco. It obviously has our serum in its blood. Well, your property just tried to kill two officers of the peace. So until our investigation into our attempted murders is concluded, you may file the requisite paperwork at the office. And does what does what this dragonborn say actually hold up to the law of the land? I don't know what like the specifics really are uh, as a player, but... So the law does not. However, precedence does. Uh, oftentimes, the big companies get what they want because they, in effect, are the law. Right. They create the laws, they influence them, all that. So normally a demand like this would instantly be met with at least something where it was, you know, trying to work out a compromise. But Bertram's just blatant like, fuck you. <laughs> um, rightfully, you can take them, but there may be some ramifications legally or otherwise. So. Shit. Well, you will hear from our lawyers immediately. Add and all, let's go. And he drags her away with the other security guard as they start marching down the hall away from you. Uh, the other three security guards uh, stick around and they are just kind of observing as you all clean up this uh, rather not so messy mess, I guess. Because, you know, mm -hmm. there was like almost no fight except for Dirk getting flung across the room, which did almost nothing, yeah. and I'm kind of upset about yeah. that, but we'll move on. I know, I, know. Um, <laughs> I didn't even use my uncanny dodge. It could have only been three damage. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I uh, <laughs> but, um... Uh, so, uh, Dirk wants to do something real quick. He's gonna bring out his notebook and just write to Adam uh, real quick that he thinks that he should try to trail them to the best of his ability to keep an eye on Adenol because Dirk has a sneaking suspicion that something terrible is about to happen to her. Um, so Dir Dirk's actually wanting to go on a stealth mission to try to make sure that she doesn't get taken away and like killed or whatever. Does Dirk and okay. Does Dirk and Adam know that Adonol was like taken away? Yeah. Did, did we see that as we're like walking out with the? Yeah, you you definitely saw that because she was standing at the door talking to Bertram, and there was quite a big commotion like of them yanking her away 
from Bertram. Okay. So yeah, like if if Dirk has to kind of like get out, um, let me let me see what kind of stuff do I have that could help. How how big are the hallways to this facility, and are they like going deeper into the facility, or do they seem like they're leaving? Uh, so the ones that left with Adenal definitely look like they're going deeper into the facility. Um, however, something that you notice immediately as an option for you mm-hmm. is to follow the crowd of police officers moving in and out of the room right now. Okay. That would allow you to get out of the room and out of the eyes of the three security guards. Now, this still will require a stealth check to kind of blend in correctly, but your chances are much higher than if they're just, like, watching you fucking leave the room. Actually, um, yeah, once once Dirk uh, gets out of eyesight from the security guards he's going to cast disguise self on him on himself to make himself look like a security guard is there a particular race that most of the guards are most of them are dragon okay so he will he will uh is there a color of the dragonborns are they mostly metallic or or uh they are mostly chromatic as are most of the ones in the city and they, they're just kind of like a mix of them. You saw three different colors of them. Uh, red, green, and a couple blues. Okay, so he'll he'll just uh, disguise self as a green dragonborn guard and do his best to completely mimic their outfits and the ID on their chest. I imagine they would have one. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you're able to do that with the spell. Yep. That that fits under its parameters, I believe. Okay. So you, you're able to kind of mimic their, their outfit and their general look. And are you just kind of like walking nonchalantly down the hall towards them? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna kinda like pretend like he's on like going that way almost like he's on patrol or whatever and following them. Okay. But, Staying at a safe distance, yeah. but not too far back to lose them. Uh, lose them. Yep. Okay. Isn't this some good quality music? This is Giants on the War March. Earth Shakers Go to War by Renee Van Toll from BattleBards.com. That's where we get all our background music and sound effects for the show. What is BattleBards? BattleBards is the most premium audio library ever created for the tabletop gaming experience, along with tools built specifically to use the audio seamlessly in-game. Tailor-made background music inspired by fantasy races and locations, voiceover scripts written to bring life to everyday NPC interactions, and a colossal array of bone-crushing, spell-blasting sound effects. This is BattleBards. If you're looking to get the best value out of BattleBards.com, I would recommend giving BattleBards Prime subscription a try. With this monthly subscription, you can enjoy streaming access to all BattleBards content access to all BattleBards tools, including their soundboard and mixer, the ability to upload and mix your own private audio library, and 20% off all purchases of sounds you wish to permanently add to your collection. I think this is enough for me. Go check it out for yourself and see what they have to offer. Now, let's get back to Dice. Adam wants to go talk with Bertram real fast. I'm going to show show him my notes. I don't want to speak the, all this information out loud. So I'll just hand him my notes that I took from uh, everything Adonal said to me or whispered to me. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well. I don't think we'll see her again. I was going to say the same thing. I think... 
perhaps we should have fought a little bit harder to keep her here, but I understand the... I don't see it not coming to blows or spells. Right. And I can, I can make friends quickly, but they kind of know after a while that um, we weren't friends at all, so... Yeah, and so probably about that time, uh, Adam, you would feel that buzz from your notebook from Dirk's message, and you'd see that you can't see Dirk anymore, and then you read that message saying that he's disguising himself and trailing them. Adam would just write back, Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then also write to you, like, obviously, Pages, if there's uh, trouble. Hmm. Well, at this point... Mm-hmm. Um, the, 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 uh, our police that are in here, are they cataloging the scene and look, taking in evidence? Correct, yes. Are they going through her desk and stuff? Yep. Um, okay. All of that. All right. So it, we, we can presume that all, all that stuff, all the, uh, info they find will be available to us at the precinct. Yep. Yes, it will. Okay. I guess let's... Head back. We'll talk to the chief, debrief, and then go over all of the evidence here. If if what you have written here is true, it changes a lot of things for us. Just made it a lot more complicated, too. It would seem that way. I guess we'll just head yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty, then. So you begin to head back, uh, and we're going to jump back to Dirk then. Dirk, you are trailing the security guard and this businessman, Jesus, excuse me, uh, and this businessman who is dragging off Adonal to who knows where. You're following at close enough distance to stay with them, but not too close to alert attention. Uh, can I actually get you to make a stealth check to kind of just do that correctly? Okay, sure. I think that a stealth check would appropriately determine your ability to tail someone. Yep. All right, rolled an 18 plus 10, so that's 28. Okay, so you are super sneaky sneaky following them. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, with that... Uh, You are able to follow them down a couple hallways. There's a couple turns here and there. And finally, they go down a uh, stairwell. Um, And from this, you just kind of have to wait a little bit because of just angles and quietly move. So you're unseen from here, just more sneaking than trailing, you know, trying to keep up your your ruse. Um, And you see them go out of the stairwell three floors down. Okay. Um, And there's a small window in the door, and you're able to peer through it. Uh, and inside, there's another hallway, but the lights here are much brighter. Okay. Um, this is obviously somewhere underground because you were just on the first floor. So it seems like the magical lights that are used to illuminate are uh, just brighter than normal. Uh, so you enter in, I'm assuming, into the room to follow uh, them. Yeah. Okay, so as you enter into this hallway... You see them go down, uh, take another corner. And during this time, you find it quite suspicious that you haven't come across anyone else in the building. Okay, yeah. Um, And all the doors you walk by seem like they're closed tight. There's not a single one, even a crack. Um, Most of them have the blinds pulled down over them. Any that don't are just dark rooms. Um, So based on this information alone, you are able to kind of like guess that maybe some sort of like lock in order was given okay by Elchemco to just kind of like shut up and stay in right um and you continue on and finally you see them enter a room uh and you're able to get to the door of this room and you peer in and as as you're able to kind of get a get a good look of this room there is this uh just kind of like chair in the center of the room with this large, looming, uh, round, metallic device over top of it. Oh, shit. Yeah, that does not sound good. Uh, how many 
how many people are in the room? Is it just the the two of them and then uh, Adonol? No. So actually, you see the two of them, Adonol, uh, two other scientists, Dragonborn and uh, white lab coats, uh, one with spectacles on, uh, both working diligently at the machine itself. Uh, as you see, it kind of like arcs back behind the chair, and there's some displays there, uh, several buttons that they're pressing, uh, kind of just going over their sheets of notes as they do so. Um, and if you look over in the corner, away from it, you see this, like, you see this kind of like array of pods. And these pods are similar to like what you'd expect uh, to be kind of like cryostasis. Okay. And you can see a face inside one of the pods. The rest are empty. Uh, and it's a white female dragonborn. Oh, shit. Uh, and Adenol is quickly shoved into the chair. Okay. Um, so seeing this all going down... Uh, Dirk's going to try to act as quickly as he can because he has a feeling that something very bad's about to happen to her. Um, okay. Is there anyone else in the hallway with Dirk? No, there's no one else in the hallways. Okay. Dirk is going to use his boots uh, to get himself up on the ceiling uh, and kind of like crouch on the ceiling uh, just right near the door. Uh, okay. But not so that, like, when the door opens, it's going to hit him. Um, so probably, you know, however he can best hide on the ceiling because mm-hmm. he's going to do something to create a distraction. Okay. Um, so. Uh, so I'm just going to have you repeat a stealth check for me. Okay. That's all. Okay. All right. So that is a dirty 20. Okay. Nice. So with the Dirty 20, you are, as far as you know, very well hidden. Okay. Uh, and what are you doing Okay. from here? So Dirk is going to be on one side of the door and down the hallway a bit uh, the, other, the other way. He's going to use Minor Illusion to create the sound of, like, um, I'm trying to think of what would be. He's going to create the sound of an explosion down the hallway um, to kind of like try to make them think that they're being attacked or something's really bad going on. And then his plan is as soon as he sees, you know, majority of them leave the room, uh, he's going to jump down and go in and, uh, if he has to. Okay, so yeah. what was the what was the effect in the hallway? I'm sorry. Okay, it uh, sound of an explosion. So we, okay, we can do so the sound step of an explosion. Step. Yeah, we can do this. Okay, step so step. yeah, so there's so you light this ex- sound of an explosion. Yeah. Uh, and as you're peering through the door from what or the the window of the door, as you can see, uh, there seems to be the security guard goes to the door and kind of peers out to see what this explosion was. Okay. And is not leaving the room quite yet. Okay. Um, uh, are you acting in any way? I would like to cast another minor illusion to uh, put a like a five foot uh, hole in the wall. Uh, make it look like there's a five foot hole in the wall to look like there was a breach. Okay, into the room. Okay. Uh, okay, so there's like a five foot hole in the wall now. All right. Um, so I'm not, yeah. So I'm not saying into the room. I'm saying like in the hallway. So when he, when the guy, oh, when he peers out, he sees yeah. he sees just a, a hole in the opposite wall. Yes. So that so that would lure them out. Okay, I thought you were creating like an illusion of part of the wall into this room was just this giant hole. That's what I thought you were trying to say. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to be a little more tactical to draw them out of the room. Okay, so as soon as you see that, um, he grabs something next to the door, and you hear loud alarms go off through the entire building. 
It's just this cacophonous. And as you're like standing on the ceiling, you uh, you look over and the horn is right next to your fucking head, and it's just like splitting into your ears. It just hurts like hell as this thing is just loudly going off, and it rings through the room, just echoing. Um, and as soon as that happens, you hear a loud, a loud coming from inside the room as uh, there's seems to be some sort of steel door dropped on the other side of this door. Uh, and you can just see, like, the slats of the steel door now. Um, and they're just loud noises uh, going off right now in the in the hall. Okay. All right. This, this is going to be a stretch, and it, I'm probably going to need some really good... Uh, some really good rules for it. Okay. But I want to try to summon Zed in into the room, some like as as sneaky as he can be to have an eye on the on the door, and I want mm-hmm. to cast my invisible mage hand also inside the room, and utilizing okay. Zed's vision, I'm gonna try to do what I can to unlock the door from the inside. So I imagine that'll probably be some stealth rolls from Zed and then like some sleight of hand. Okay, so I'm going to need you to make an intelligence check to place Zed in the room okay. to start. So we'll just start there, flat intelligence flat check. Flat intelligence, okay. Alright, so it's a 14 plus 4, nice, 18. 18. Okay, so with a, with an 18 intelligence check, you are able to appropriately drop him into the room. Uh, next, I need you to make a very good stealth check for Zed, uh, and this is going to need to be made at disadvantage because oh. you were unable to put him in an advantageous spot like you normally are. Right. So he could have just popped, like, in the middle of the room. Uh, so you're just kind of doing your best here to drop him in as well as you can but he's going to be at a slight disadvantage to not be seen immediately. I don't know. That's, that's a pretty solid disadvantage, if I do say so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a 10. Okay. So, uh, Zed is in the room and uh, immediately tries to hide. Uh, now, are you able to immediately look through his eyes, or do you need to spend another action to do so? Uh, I believe it's another action, so there's a good chance he's just going to get poofed. Uh, So you are able to pop into his eyes as you see him kind of like squawking and kind of like flailing around as uh, one of the scientists is batting at him with a uh, tray. And you look down at what is Zed's armor class? (laughs) Not great. It's 11. (laughs) Okay. It's 11? Okay. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, the security guard finally getting his weapon out has uh, the rifle pointed at Zed, and you look down the barrel as you hear a loud bang uh, in your own head, and Zed poofs out of existence from the shot, because he only has one HP, correct? Uh, three. But still, three, okay. But still. Yeah, it's still, still guaranteed poof. Yeah. Uh, so Zed is not in there right now. Uh, there seems to be a loud commotion going on inside. Did, did I get any visual of the of the door mechanism? Um. Okay. So visual of the door mechanisms. Make a perception check. Okay. It's got to be a really good one for you to have picked anything out of that because there was a lot going on. Right. And it was kind of a, a very. It, there was it was less than six seconds that that all happened when you popped into his eyes right. and then he got shot. So. So I rolled a 12 and a plus 5, so that's 17. Okay, so that's actually decent. Uh, You were able to look at the door, and there seems to be um, a few different levers near the door. Uh, However, you're unsure of which one might be the one to open the door, if even any of them are. Uh, The door just seems to be, you know how, like, um, it's more of like this solid steel, like, garage-style door that just dropped down. Okay, Um, yeah. But based on the look of it, you were able to determine it's probably a couple inches thick just from how it, it sits in the wall. So Okay. Um, how, how far away from the door is the chair? Uh, so the chair is in the center of the room, and we'll say this is in a very large room. We'll say it's like maybe 20 feet away from the door. 
Uh, and also, you did see her sitting in the chair now, um, and there was some lights, and it looked like the uh, mechanical contraption above her head was spinning in some way when Zed was in there. Okay. <sighs> All right. I would like to first try to use my invisible mage hand to do something to unlock the door if I can, to open the door. Okay, so I mentioned that there was a few levers. We're going to say there were like three levers near the door. Okay. Uh, And your best guess is that one of these will open the door. Okay. Okay. Uh, But as you go to cast your mage hand, you hear footsteps coming down the hall. Now, you hear several footsteps. Okay. You would guess that there are at least five people storming down the hall towards you now. Okay. So Dirk's going to drop down and still disguised he's gonna act as if he's uh, standing guard at the door um okay and and you know if if he can he's still gonna cast the mage hand before it happens or before anybody else gets in into eye shot all right not a problem uh so you're going to cast the mage hand and I, I just wanted to make sure you knew that, like, something else was coming up. So you get the mage hand inside the room. Okay? Now, which lever are you going to pull? One, two, or three? Oh, shit. Uh. <laughs> and you can't see in there, so you're able to place the mage hand on one of these levers. From there, you might have to stumble around to maneuver the mage hand from there. Okay. Let's go with lever number three, DM. <laughs> All right. So lever number three, you pull this lever... Uh, And as you do so, uh, inside, you hear some loud, like, annoyed yells coming from inside the room. Okay. Uh, But other than that, you you do not, you don't know what happened because you're not in there. Um, And you you can, we'll just say that, like, you can feel uh, your mage hand just gripping something. It's kind of like when you're in pitch blackness, but you can still feel what your hands are touching. You know what I mean? You, You have that sensation right now with your mage hand because you can't see into the room. Right. Damn. Okay. Uh, And as you do this, uh, there are some guards rounding the corner. Uh, One of them seems to have a different uniform, uh, and it's this uh, half-orc who kind of, like, stands a little bit taller than the rest of them. Uh, And he's got, like, this pale gray skin uh, and is just... His his teeth seem like they're filed down. He's got like this crew cut. Uh, there's like this giant rifle on his back, oh, shit. and he's just kind of storming down the hall towards you as he sees you. Oh shit! Okay. Um. Yeah, this is starting to get pretty dire. Uh, no, the real question is: Does Dirk want to try to play off that he's a guard, or does he just want a GTFO because he can't really help much? Uh, do I have a chance to try another lever before he gets to me? You do, yes. Okay. Then I'm, I'm, I'm going to try one more lever. Okay. So you're going for two or one? Uh, let's go two. Okay. So you grab the number two lever. And as you do so, you pull it and the alarm shuts off. Okay. Uh, and immediately after it shuts off, within a few seconds, it's turned back on. And the yelling... <laughs> inside the room just just stops eventually and you hear why the fuck did he just turn off the lights what the hell is going on Who th- where the fuck did this hand come from wait it's, it's invisible, invisible isn't it yeah yeah so he's like what the fuck is going on with the lights who keeps messing with the goddamn alarm <laughs> arcane trickery at its finest <laughs> yeah quite successful actually uh okay so yeah, now the uh, this this half orc is directly in front of you and is kind of marching towards you as you kind of just stand guard and seem to be focusing on something and just kind of like peering back at him with glances. And uh, there's there's a handful of security guards behind him. We'll say four of them, uh, just standing at perfect attention behind him. And uh, he'll he'll look at you. Uh, and so at this point, I like when I saw him coming down the hall, I would have dropped the the um, illusion of the hole in the wall. Uh, okay, yep. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. I, I assume that you dropped it as soon as the door dropped and no one could see it anyways, right. so. Okay, uh, so, so yeah, there's no hole there. 
What is your designation? Of course. <laughs> I don't recognize you. Okay, so um, quick, quick question for the DM. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> do you, do so, you want to make a bullshit roll? <laughs> so, so did they? Did they come from? Uh, did they come from the direction that I entered in, the, the, the way that I know to get back out? They seem to have. Uh, you also know that that was where the stairwell was, so that's the most logical direction that anyone would come from. Um, I am going to let you pull a bullshit move right now if you'd like. Bullshit roll? Okay. <laughs> How I'm going to ask you to do this, though, is that you would be required to use one of your intuition points that I gave you. Okay. And this would allow you to have at some point just glanced at a badge of one of the security guards you've seen so far. Okay. And you're able to come up with either giving him the exact number. Okay. Or a number similar enough to it that it would pass possibly. Pass possibly just for the time being and then he would probably correct yeah it's i mean if he's like those numbers don't make sense as an option then he's gonna be suspicious or he might just believe that you're a newcomer right or there's also the slight chance that he knows no this is this is so-and-so's number so this this is these are all the things going through your head right now as you decide which one of your options you're gonna take Okay, so I'm gonna use an intuition point. What, what do I gotta roll? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to have you roll a perception check, and this is retroactively. Perception check. Okay. okay. And this is just to see if you were able to pick up that number. Oh boy. Chances are pretty high. Alright, so that was a, another 12 plus 5, so it's 17. Okay, so you were able to, to see one of the security guards badges upstairs okay while you were in that room uh and you remember that it was a six digit code uh and you saw we'll we'll actually say that you saw two numbers you saw that they were both six digit codes and they both started with the number zero zero if you'd like you can use the exact code of either of them i'm not gonna read it out because that's kind of pointless uh but you can use either their code or you can come up with your own that is similar to it. Okay. So you Which s- of those would you choose? So you said it starts with zero, zero, it has two numbers and it's six digits? Or it has yes. two letters, rather? Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, I'll just use one of theirs. If there's, if one of them was a green dragonborn, I would use that one. <laughs> yeah, we'll say that the one that you were looking at was a green dragonborn and you were able to give him that number. Okay. Uh, also to note, you do not see that green dragonborn behind him right now. Perfect. So <laughs> <laughs> that would that would just ruin this whole illusion. So you give him this number and you rattle it off to it. 008AB4. Okay. And wow, that, that's actually kind of scary. That's similar to what I was going to say. <laughs> awesome. That's wonderful. I love that we think so much alike. Uh, but he, uh, what are you doing down here? I was told he he just seems kind of annoyed, and he seems to have like taken your your code without any thought. Okay, so uh, Dirk's gonna use kind of like a more gruff, dragonborn esque voice. I was told to keep watch in the hallway. By who? I am the authority here. Get back upstairs and guard the fucking doors. What are you doing? Get now. Right go away. right away, sir. And so, as much as Dirk hates to leave Adenal, he he realizes there's nothing he can really do at this point. So, uh, he gathered some information. He knows there's some really shady shit going on, but alone, without help, and also without revealing himself, he's got to get out of there before he gets in trouble. <laughs> so, yeah, he's just going to take off. Yeah, so Dirk takes off, and he heads towards the entrance, and as he does, we are going to end this episode of Dice Heist here. Ooh. <laughs> Shit just got so much more complicated, but I, I think I think we all kind of knew it was heading in that direction. Oh, I'm sorry. You, you thought that was complicated. 
Yeah. I thought this was just going to be a cut and dry fucking fight where you guys had to kill this thing. <laughs> yeah, we ended up being But out, instead, out I had to code. make up all this other bullshit yeah. that happened instead. So thank you. Thank you for that one. <laughs> uh, you thought. <laughs> yeah, I guess like Adam's I thinking know. like, well, if this thing is going to be alive for a few hours, maybe we can put it to sleep, question it, figure out where its home base is, but... Uh, fuck, now I feel like Adam's more worried about Adonol, honestly. Like, that's like a lead that we might not be able to follow other than actually trying to find out where her little lab was in the warehouse. If that's, if that's even there anymore. Like, for all we know, Kemko's already fucking cleaned it up. Yep, so we can, uh, we can hash that out and, uh, dive deeper into that next time on Dice Heist. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed, even though this wasn't the spectacular fight it was supposed to be. I hope it was at least entertaining and uh, awesome that these guys did zero damage to the creature that had 135 hit points Holy shit! <laughs> and just took it out without any issue, uh, taking six hit points total between all three of them. Woo! Kind of angry, but also impressed at the same time. So we will see you guys next time on Dice Heist. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye for now. Bye, guys. Thank you all for listening to this episode of Dice Heist. Our next episode will be released on Sunday, June 27th, and there will be no episode on July 4th. We're actually just going to take a break that week and give you guys a chance to just enjoy time with your families, just like we're going to do the same. I want to give a special thanks to Nick for letting us use his song, Something For Now, for our intro and outro. I'd like to thank my wife, Erica, for her support and her wonderful work on our show notes and her additional help writing flavor text for various episodes of the show. I'd like to thank Battle Bards for their help improving our show by using their enormous library of background music, sound effects, and soundscapes, uh, NPC dialogue, all these sorts of tools that I have tried to incorporate into the production to try and increase the value of it for you, the listeners. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at dice underscore heist, and on Facebook, we have a Facebook page, uh, Dice Heist Podcast. Also, feel free to email us at diceheistpodcast at gmail.com. Next up is our giveaway. So we've been running this giveaway for quite a while now. And I think we're going to finally set a drawing date as we've seen an increase in listener interaction on social media. To enter to win in this contest, all you need to do is like, share, and follow any of our posts on Twitter or on Facebook. So you have a chance to win some cool stuff. So these items that are up for grabs are a set of seven dice. Uh, we also have scale mail dice bags and chain mail owl keychains. So we're going to be drawing six winners total and two of each of the items will be given out. Uh, we will be going in order and you guys will have a chance to pick which one you want based on that. We are going to be drawing this on July 30th. So I know that's a little bit of ways now, but... On July 30th, we are going to be drawing this, and from there, it will be done. Stay tuned for that, and also make sure that if you have entered in the past, uh, make sure that you're checking your inbox as of that date. Um, we're only going to wait probably about uh, oh, two weeks or so, and if we don't get a reply from you, we're going to have to draw someone else so we can make sure we can get you guys your prizes. I think that'll be great, and I can't wait to do that. Lastly, I'd like to thank you one more time for listening. Don't forget to stay tuned for the next episode of Dice Heist.